What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got our week four fantasy football wide receiver starts and sits for every single matchup. So make sure to tune in. If you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at all day pigskin to continue interacting with us there. And let us hear it in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's get right into it. Real quick, before getting into our breakdown, a quick word from our partners at Price Picks, which is our favorite DFS site of choice this NFL and fantasy football season. If you guys aren't familiar with them, do yourself a favor and check them out. In fact, when you sign up right now and use code ADP, you get a 100% deposit match up to $100. And look, we're already doing all this research for our fantasy football matchup. So why not take advantage of it and get some profits as well? Price picks, well, they allow you to basically do exactly that. They have so many different player prop bets, not only in terms of single stat DFS, but also in terms of fantasy score. And you combine can combine them any which way you want. Super simple, super easy to use. All you have to do, choose two more players from the board, and then just pick the over under on their projected fantasy score or on their single stat. Again, pretty much for every single matchup as the week progresses, those uh, options will be updated even more so. And then the great thing is you've got two different options in terms of how you want to bet it, whether it's a flex play. So that way you can miss one of your selections, but still win. Obviously that's the safer choice. Or if you want more bang for your buck, check out the power play where if you get all your picks correct, well, you win even bigger. So again, check all of that out details in the description. We kick off week four with the Jaguars at the Bengals. And as far as wide receivers to target here, Marvin Jones continues to be the most reliable wide receiver for the Jaguars, and it's not even close. As we predicted, the veteran wide receiver has asserted himself as the most trusted target for Trevor Lawrence. And honestly, he's pretty much the lone, bright, consistent spot on this offense. I'm going to continue to trot him out as a high-end wide receiver too, with nice touchdown upside as well. The other Jacksonville wide receivers... Look, it's nice to see DJ Shark is getting the targets, and that's good and all, but the conversion rate, the success rate he has with those targets is absolutely atrocious. If he's getting 10 targets and only has like three, four catches, that's not all that much to get excited about. I think he's way too touchdown dependent. He has me worried. Now, to be fair, if you are forced to start one of these other two Jacksonville wide receivers, I would go with Shark because he is getting the targets compared to a LaVisca Chanel, uh, but I think right now they're both way too risky, especially considering how bad the Jaguars look, honestly, from top to bottom, so I'd rather sit both of them, and for the Bengals, uh, when you consider that they're facing this awful Jaguars team, this awful Jaguars defense, I'd be all right starting all three wide receivers. Yes, T. Higgins did not play in week three, so his status is worth keeping an eye out, a four, but if he suits up, then you start him. I'm all right starting Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd. I think the Bengals can put up a lot of points here versus the Jaguars. I think all of these three wide receivers have, you know, decent touchdown upside. All in all, I think the Bengals offense can have a lot of success versus the Jaguars. So I'd fire up all of these guys. Then Titans at the Jets. This one's a little bit rough. For the Titans, Julio Jones is the primary name. I think he should get maybe a small bump compared to other weeks because A.J. Brown dealing with a hamstring that's week to week. My guess would be he doesn't play. If he does, I think he might be limited. He might be out there kind of as you know, a guy to take coverages away from other targets. So I'm sitting A.J. Brown and Nick Westbrook, another guy that's maybe a hot name on waiver wires. I understand it, but to me, when you consider that the Titans are playing the Jets, I think the game plan is going to be simple. It's run it, run it, and run it some more. So I don't necessarily love uh, the wide receivers for the Titans in this game due to that. Uh, Julio Jones is the primary guy. And in my opinion, he's a high-end wide receiver too because of the matchup. Uh, then the Jets. Oh, man, it gets from bad to worse. 
Corey Davis, like at least he's getting the targets. That's what you're hoping for. The Titans defense has been giving up some points, but Zach Wilson looks atrocious. The Jets look atrocious offensively, defensively, you know, Elijah Moore, he's getting the targets, but he's still young. He's struggling. Jamison Crowder still hasn't played. Maybe this is the week he plays for what it's worth. When he does return, I think that will help Zach Wilson and Crowder might actually be decent in PPR formats. But until that actually happens, you know, I'm going to have him as a sit. You go with Corey Davis, but I think he's probably a low end wide receiver too at best. Then Lions at the Bears. I'll start everyone on the Bears squad. Yes, I know they're coming off one of their worst, literally, games in ages, but there's a difference between the Cleveland defense and the Lions defense, and the Bears are going to be able to have their way with the Lions defense, in my opinion. I think David Montgomery is going to bounce back at the running back position, and I think the wide receivers are going to have good outings, regardless of who the wide or who the quarterback is. Uh, Robinson is a guy that's should be a mid to high-end wide receiver too. And Mooney, probably a low-end wide receiver too. Uh, It's not out of the picture. For the Lions though, I'm honestly sitting all of the wide receiver options that they have. To to me, none of these guys are quite there yet. They're not consistent enough. And yes, the Bears secondary can be exposed, but these guys just too young, like Amon Ross St. Brown, not showing it. Khalif Raymond, don't go chasing the points from last week in the targets. That's the first week he's shown up this entire season. I don't trust it. Quintus Cephas still remains the highest upside wide receiver in my eyes. But again, to me, it's going to be too tough to trust. So I'd rather fade them. You know, the main guys here are the running backs and TJ Hawkinson at tight end that the Lions are going to be throwing to. Uh, the wide receivers just at this point in time, don't have that consistency, so I'd be fading them. After that, Colts at the Dolphins. For Indianapolis, look, Michael Pittman is the guy. He's getting crazy amount of targets, so that's nice to see. Touchdowns aren't quite there, but if he has seven to eight catches for, you know, between 70, 80 yards, that's pretty good in PPR formats. That's what I'm looking for. For the Dolphins with Tua, you know, missing uh, last week, missing this week. It's going to be a situation where I look to week three. What did we see there? And it was a situation where Waddle led the team in targets. And there's no reason to think that it won't happen again. I think he's going to be the preferred wide receiver option, even though I really do like Will Fuller. But this offense without Tua and, you know, even with him to some extent, I I think it only has room for one fantasy relevant wide receiver. Right now with Without two, it seems to be Waddle, so I'll go in that direction, but I do much more so prefer Pittman. As far as the sits, Pascal, you saw it last week. He's touchdown dependent. When he doesn't get the touchdowns, he is not a good fantasy reliable wide receiver. I have him as a sit for that reason. And then for the Dolphins, for the reasons I mentioned, Will Fleur and Devontae Parker are also sits. Moving on to the Browns, the Vikings. Nice to see Odell Beckham finally back for Cleveland last week. And, you know, easing him in, but he still had a good performance versus uh, the Chicago Bears, all things considered. And I think that can continue and they can build on that here versus this Minnesota Vikings defense, which, you know, continues to give up a lot of points week in and week out. So to me, Beckham probably mid to high end wide receiver, too. Then for Minnesota, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, like I've said before, yes, there's some names that will come up from time to time, like a KJ Osborne, who we told you to sit last week. We're saying it again. Simply put, Jefferson and Adam Thielen are the two most reliable wide receivers here on this offense. Jefferson finally had that big week in week three, and, you know, we're rolling with it here. Bit of a tough opponent, but, you know, Jefferson still should be a low-end wide receiver one. Thielen, high to mid-level wide receiver two. Moving on, Washington at the Falcons. Don't necessarily love this one, but you start Terry McLaurin. Washington really struggled in week three, but the bright spot is at least McLaurin got the majority of the targets. And here versus this Falcons defense, I think he should have some success. Now, the reason I'm not starting Adam Humphreys is because the way I see the situation playing out, I think 
Washington probably runs the ball a lot. They go to, you know, Logan Thomas for those short passes, and then they just go for the big gains. And that should be Terry McLaurin there. I think Humphreys is more of that short route uh, guy that won't be as needed as much here versus the Falcons. For Atlanta, Calvin Ridley, you got to start him every single week. It's a tough matchup. Yes, the Falcons don't look good. Uh, Ridley, probably a high end wide receiver two on the week. Kind of have to adjust our expectations there. And then Olamide Zacchaeus, uh, probably butchered, butchered that name. But the point being is I can't trust any other wide receiver on this offense at this point in time for the Falcons. It seems like the second best pass catcher is Cordero Patterson, who I guess you could technically list as a wide receiver. I view him as a running back. Uh, the point being is while Russell Gage is out, I just don't really trust any of these other wide receivers other than Ridley, especially with how much the Falcons have struggled offensively and with this tough defensive matchup. Afterwards, Texans at the Bills. I really like, well, all the wide receivers here that are worth a damn in fantasy. Uh, specifically, Brendan Cooks seems to be, well, quarterback proof, so that's nice to see. Uh, Davis Mills, even with his struggles that we saw in week three, I think Brendan Cooks, you continue to trot him out, trot him out, th out there because he's going to get that crazy volume. Uh, for the Bills, Stephon Diggs, Cole Beasley, and Emmanuel Sanders, this is a very friendly matchup. I think they can all be fantasy relevant. I would personally rank them the way that I have them listed here. Diggs, then Beasley, then Emmanuel Sanders. Beasley is getting more consistent targets, and Emmanuel Sanders had a big week, but it was because he had two touchdowns. So for that reason, even though I think Sanders will get more involved as the season progresses, right now I'd rather go with the targets, with the volume. Uh, so I'm going Beasley and Diggs as my top two options, and then Sanders probably is a high-end wide receiver three because of the nice matchup. Moving on, Giants at the Saints. I really don't like this one as far as wide receivers are concerned. For the Giants, Kenny Galladay, you know, he's the lone guy standing, if you will. Like, even though he's not 100% healthy, he's the healthiest wide receiver for the Giants, which uh, doesn't expire a lot of confidence. But I'll start him here. He's more so a standard scoring type of wide receiver, like five receptions, 50 to 70 yards. So uh, low end wide receiver, too. You're hoping for a touchdown there. Sterling Shepard, he would be a start, but he nicks up the hamstring. And same with Darius Slayton. We don't really have an expected timeline for their returns. And for that reason, have them as sits. If Shepard plays, I'd play him. If Darius Slayton is available, I'd still sit him. Colin Johnson had a successful outing last week, but you know, I don't I haven't seen enough consistency from him. I think it's probably gonna be Kenny Galladay. I think it's gonna be looking at the tight ends. I think it's gonna be Saquon Barkley here and probably another low scoring game. So I'm fading the remainder of the Giants wide receivers for the Saints. I'm fading all the wide receivers. Uh, Harris Callaway. I know Callaway had a touchdown, but other than that, nothing too eventful. It remains Alvin Kamara for the Saints. That's why offensively they are hard to trust and why I'm fading their wide receivers. Then we've got the Chiefs at the Eagles and Tyree Hill has had, you know, two back-to-back -back kind of subpar weeks and a bit concerning because this was what didn't happen in 2020, which is what made him such a great wide receiver that he finally took away the inconsistencies from years prior. Now, if that's the case and those inconsistencies return, you know, it's going to be a little bit worrisome. Hill's not going to be a locked and loaded top three wide receiver every single week. But here versus the Eagles, I think Tyreek Hill does bounce back. So I like him as a, you know, top five wide receiver on the week. For the Eagles, it's not pretty. I still think Devonta Smith has the highest upside out of all these wide receivers. Uh, Jalen Rieger, you know, Greg Ward. It, it's mainly Devonta Smith. We'll see uh, what happens, how the game flows. But I think there's potential for a lot of points to be scored here. So I like Devonta Smith. I like the upside there. Kind of boom or bust. But, you know, as a low-end wide receiver two, high-end wide receiver three, he's my preferred choice for the Eagles. And then... Uh, Jalen Rieger, I'm sitting, I think he's kind of a subpar version of Devonta Smith, and for the Chiefs, Hardman, Demarcus Robinson, just, again, way too tough to rely on, so I am benching them. Then we go to the Panthers at the Cowboys, and this is a game that I really, really like for the wide receivers. I think it's got high-scoring upside, and for the Panthers, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and Terrace Marshall, I would start without Christian McCaffrey, 
Well, we're getting shades of 2020 where all three wide receivers for the Panthers were fantasy relevant. The coaches for the Panthers have said they need to get Robbie Anderson more involved. I think that's nice, and I think it could happen here versus the Cowboys, but make no mistake about it, DJ Moore is the top guy. He's a wide receiver one right now. He's getting targets like absolutely crazy. I think it continues here. Uh, I think Terrace Marshall could be the guy that's kind of cleaning up, taking some of those Christian McCaffrey uh, type of catches, you know, those, sh those short routes. Robbie Anderson should have opportunities down the field. So I like all these guys. I think Robbie Anderson, low end wide receiver two, Terrace Marshall, you know, a guy, maybe a high end wide receiver three for the Cowboys. It's the usual duo, CeeDee Lamb, Amari Cooper. They didn't really have to do all that much uh, in week three. It was kind of the Zeke and tight end show. But here versus the Panthers, I think we see CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper kind of, you know, return to high end wide receiver two categories. Then Seahawks at the 49ers. I'm starting both duos here, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. Metcalf finally had that big game. Tyler Lockett finally had that dud game, and it'll happen. Uh, we've said it before, Tyler Lockett, he absolutely has the ability to, in the first two weeks of the season, lead every single wide receiver, be the number one guy in all of fantasy football, and then in week three, put up like four or five points. Uh, it's going to happen, uh, but here versus the 49ers, I, I think we should have a bounce back performance. Uh, I continue to see both these guys as high-end wide receiver twos for the 49ers. Debo Samuel, he continues to get the targets, which is really, really nice to see. Uh, and I'm going to start him, you know, uh, a mid to high-end wide receiver two. The Seahawks defense has struggled so far this season, so I like it. Brendan Ayuk may be seemingly out of the doghouse. He got some targets, got a touchdown in week three. Nice to see, get himself reestablished. It's a nice matchup. And if, again, week three was any indication, I think Ayuk is trending back in the right direction. So I would take a chance on him as a low-end wide receiver too. After this, Cardinals at the Rams. This one's intriguing. Um, so I'll start DeAndre Hopkins and Christian Kirk. Hopkins, maybe not 100% right now, which is why we saw somebody like an A.J. Green have a fantasy relevant performance in week three. If Hopkins is trending towards, you know, potentially being questionable, doubtful, I think A.J. Green is a valid choice for another, you know, uh, start here. But the Rams defense, it's a really, really tough unit. And I think that this is a game where it's going to be the toughest opponent that the Cardinals have had this season bar none so I, I would kind of temper expectations but right now I'd be I'd be guessing Hopkins does play I'm still starting him I'll start Kirk yes kind of boomer bust but uh, to me he's still the second best wide receiver on this team and then I'm sitting AJ Green and Rondell Moore if the above two play uh, I, I just don't love the opportunities here versus this great defense for the Rams Cooper Cup and Robert Woods it continues to be the case every single week now, yes, Robert Woods has struggled mightily, and we're probably going to hear those questions. Should we bench Robert Woods? And it's a possibility, but I would say not yet. This is a great matchup here versus the Rams versus this Cardinals defense. I think Robert Woods can have a good performance. Okay, maybe Cooper Cup is, is the guy for the Rams, and he belongs as that number one wide receiver, but I'm not ready to give up on Robert Woods quite yet. Uh, if he struggles yet again here, then we can have that conversation. In the meantime, sitting Deshaun Jackson, sitting Van Jefferson, Cardinals really struggled against the run uh, last week, and I think the Rams can have some success in that department. That's why I don't want to get too cute with all these wide receivers for the Rams, even though they did have some success last week versus the Bucks. Then Packers at the Steelers. For the Packers, really simple. It's Devontae Adams. It's always been Devontae Adams. It'll always be just Devontae Adams. And I, I feel like I don't have to say anything else. Uh, Lazard and MVS are only relevant if Devontae Adams is injured, which even though he took a big hit uh, in that game in week three versus the 49ers, you know, he came back. So seemingly all right for the Steelers. A lot of injuries here. Does Deontay Johnson return? Does Juju Smith-Schuster play? Uh, kind of up in the air. My guess would be Juju Smith does play. Chase Claypool does play right now. I think Claypool has the highest upside. Deontay Johnson still kind of in limbo. If he does play, I start him. This Packers secondary, not all that scary. So I like the upside for all of these guys. The Steelers, they continue to not be a running football team. So passing is going to be the name of the game for them. So all these three wide receivers have some really nice upside. 
then Ravens at the Broncos. Surprisingly, you know, I like all the top wide receivers here. For the Ravens, Marquise Butterhands Brown, uh, even though he, you know, he drops like three sure touchdowns every other week, you continue to start him because he gets the majority of the targets and he has that high upside. So you start him. Uh, Sammy Watkins is another guy that, you know, even though he isn't the biggest upside guy, you still start him because he is the number two guy on this offense and Lamar Jackson is going to air it out. And for that reason, I think Sammy Watkins will have some opportunities, but uh, definitely probably a low end wide receiver two, probably actually a, in the wide receiver three category because of the tough matchup versus this Broncos defense. Then for Denver, Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick, I would start both of them, especially with KJ Hamler out for the season. Now, I think Tim Patrick is firmly the number two wide receiver, at least until Jerry Judy comes back. So I like both these guys as low to mid-level wide receiver twos. And honestly, probably the duo I would prefer over the Ravens duo. Then we go to the Bucks at the Patriots. This is the Tom Brady revenge game. I'm starting every single Tampa Bay wide receiver. I think they're going to have a big game. I think Brady is going to throw it all over New England. I think he's going to go for like three to four touchdowns. And that means Evans, Godwin, Antonio Brown, if he plays again because of his COVID issue that caused him to miss week three, should all be fantasy relevant. For the Patriots, Jacoby Myers, he's just simply put the most consistent guy. He's getting the targets. So in PPR, you know, formats, uh, low end wide receiver two. other guys, you know, they have some big weeks here, there, uh, but not too consistently. So I can't trust them for that reason. Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne are sits, especially versus this Buccaneers team, even though if there's anywhere they can be exploded, it would be in the secondary. Finally, Raiders at the Chargers. Uh, for the Raiders, yes, Henry Ruggs, Brian Edwards, have kind of had a couple of decent weeks here, but to me, Renfro is the most fantasy reliable wide receiver that they have. Doesn't have as much big play upside as Ruggs or Edwards, but you know, if you can guarantee me five to seven receptions for like 60 yards and seven to eight targets every single game, I'll take that. So that's what I'm going with here. I'm just going with the higher floor and Hunter Renfro, a low end wide receiver too, preferably in PPR formats for the Chargers. Boy, oh boy, what a pleasant surprise Mike Williams has been. And, you know, Keenan Allen, kind of the wide receiver too on this team, a little bit scary, but uh, they're still both very, very startable. Both, I would say, are wide receiver ones. Uh, Williams across all formats, Keenan Allen primarily in PPR formats, but you, you still go with him. So for the Chargers, you start all wide receivers there, and it should be a good one in terms of their opportunities. But with that, we wrap up our week four fantasy football wide receiver starts and sits for every single matchup. As always, let us hear it in the comment section. Did you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. And if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, and give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. But in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.